Hi, welcome back. So far we've created a scene with our viruses, our red blood cells, and we can shoot droplets of hand sanitizer into there. But the droplets currently continue on forever through the scene after we have shot them. So they will just live forever in the system, which is not what you want because once they're kind of gone, they're gone and you don't want them clogging up memory. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to create a timed destruction system. Time destruction system can be used on anything in your scene and we can do that by putting a special tag onto anything that we want time destruction to occur on. So I'm just going to create another C sharp script and we're going to call this one lifetime data. Okay, let's open that one up. Now again, this is going to be an I component data. So you can just grab one of the other ones. This is the bullet one. Copy that and paste it over into here. This time we're going to call it lifetime data. Now it doesn't have a speed this time. Instead, it's our life left. So it's a float value. We can set it initially for how long we want our object to exist for. So save that. Now let's go back into Unity. We want to put that on our droplet, but as I said, you can put it on in anything you want. So select your droplet, then over in the inspector, you want to drag and drop lifetime data on to there. Now we're not going to set this in our script, but we want our bullets to exist for two seconds. So let's set that to two. Now we can write the code or the system code that's going to allow us to destroy them after two seconds. Okay, so right click, create C sharp script and in here, let's call it timed destroy system. So this is going to be like our other systems or at least very similar. So grab hold of another one of your systems like the float system in this case, copy all of that and let's go across into our time destroy put it down there and just rename it up here. So timed destroy system. And inside of here, we're going to go and get the lifetime data entities down here. So let's just change this to also timed destroy and this will be lifetime data and let's call it lifetime data. So life time data there. Now each time we loop we want to destroy something okay so we don't need any of this movement code that's going on here that we copied across before. Instead what we want is to still use delta time but to count down delta time on our lifetime data value. So inside of here we're going to go lifetime data dot life left minus equals delta time and that will count down that value that's on that entity and then we can just say if lifetime data dot life left is less than or equal to zero then its time is up and we're going to destroy it so we use the entity manager dot destroy entity code for this entity. Now we have this error with entity. So where do we get this entity from? Well, the entity has to get passed through in the for each. So the for each can actually as the very first thing that you've got in there is have the entity like that. Now, uh, it knows in each loop which particular entity these components belong to so that we can get it and destroy it. Or you can actually do anything else you like with it in here. Now we don't need uh, most of these things. Let's just get rid of physics because that's just kind of superfluous and so is rotation and we'll leave translation position in there because you do actually need that just to be on it. The other issue that we're going to have now is that this 
isn't actually going to work. If I save this and we go ahead and go back into Unity and after it's compiled, we're going to get an error down here. And it says that the time destroyed system entities for each Lambda expression make a structural change. So what does that mean? Well, it's actually making a structural change to the memory because we're removing items from memory. We're removing entities. So you can't use a job system in parallel to remove stuff. You actually have to do it one item at a time, which is essentially going back to a normal for loop. But the way to do it inside of an on update is to make just a few modifications. First of all, we don't have a job handle. So we get rid of that job handle, which means we don't actually complete anything down the bottom. And then we need to still return something. So let's just return input depths and let's put that down there. Okay, now we're not going to have with name either, but instead we're gonna have entities, then we're going to have without burst dot with structural changes like that. And that will allow us to make structural changes. It'll allow us to still use our for each, but we can't schedule anything. Okay, instead what we have to do is run it. So we just put a dot run down the bottom, which isn't dependent on anything because it's not an actual parallel job. And so we just put that there. This obviously isn't getting used. Um, and this is just going to run around like a, well, you know, like just a normal for loop through one item at a time, except that it is picking up entities and their components or via their components. Okay, so let's save that now. Go back into Unity and once that finishes compile, you should be able to run it and you'll find that your droplets are now going to be destroyed within two seconds. Now I can see them being destroyed right there in the distance. If you can't, uh, you might want to just change it down to like living for one second, uh, which is probably enough to actually then hit something and explode it. Okay, so now just uh, as a matter of example, if you go to your viruses and let's go and add on that lifetime data here and set your viruses to exist for five seconds, when we press play, you'll find that you're going to get viruses. And then if you wait for five seconds into the simulation, they will eventually, whoop, they'll all disappear. Okay, so they've all been deleted from your scenario, which is not what you want. So let's just get rid of that, but just as an example. Okay, so that's a timed destruction and you can use that on anything and we will in a little bit when we get our white blood cells going we'll actually set them up to be destroyed after a certain amount of time of having been instantiated because again you don't want them kind of floating around in the system taking up memory forever either thanks for watching please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing and as always visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials